This week on Wisconsin Foodie. About an hour outside of Milwaukee in Palmyra, Wisconsin is Rushing Water Trout Farm. There was a lot of production out there. Rainbow trout grown for quantity. We wanted to be quality. The first thing we did was let's try to do it without chemicals, all natural. People thought we were a little bit crazy, but you know what? This is a little different farm. We did that and honestly, we haven't looked back. Want to give it a shot? Yeah, that's why I came. Nice one. Oh yeah. It's the rush of rushing water, man, catching your first trout. So we're gonna dress a fish, or as the fish might be feeling, undress one. Yeah. You can cook trout 101 different ways. Oh yeah. You yeah. can cook salmon 101 different ways. Yeah. It's all in the eye of the beholder how you want to actually have your fish. Oh yes. It is such a delicious, flavorful fish, and it's cooked so well. Wisconsin Foodie would like to thank the following underwriters for their support. Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board and the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin. Society Insurance, small details, big difference. Outpost Natural Foods Co-op. Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Illing Company, creating packaging solutions for you. Fab Wisconsin, the regional food and beverage industry cluster. The Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board and the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin are proud to support Wisconsin Foodie, helping viewers celebrate our state's vibrant food culture. With nearly 11,000 family dairy farms, the Wisconsin dairy industry generates more than $26 billion annually for the Wisconsin economy and brings recognition to the state for producing award-winning cheeses. I've had Society Insurance for my restaurant from the beginning because I know they understand my business and how it's evolving and how the industry is evolving. You're going to have the coverage and the support you need for your unique operation. The Milwaukee region has the highest concentration of jobs in food, beverage, and ingredients manufacturing in the nation. From production to processing right down to our plates, our regional food industry offers career opportunities to fulfill your dreams and feed the world. About an hour outside of Milwaukee in Palmyra, Wisconsin is Rushing Water Trout Farm. It's 56 beautiful ponds of farm-raised rainbow trout. It started in the 1930s but was really re-enlivened in the 90s by Peter Furch. I'm here to meet with him, catch some fish, see the process, and have a great meal. Hi, my name is Peter Fritsch. I'm the president of Rushing Waters Fisheries here in Palmyra, Wisconsin. When I came on board in 1997, we were looking for a way to really differentiate ourselves and create a niche. There was a lot of production out there, rainbow trout grown for quantity. We wanted to be quality. The first thing we did was let's try to do it without chemicals, all natural. People thought we were a little bit crazy, but you know what? This is a little different farm. We did that, and honestly, we haven't looked back. Yeah, and another great thing is just seeing uh, people fishing. And honestly, there's a lot of people that have gotten away from fishing. We've got uh, grandsons uh, with their grandfathers catching their first fish. Last week we had a retirement home, people in their 80s catching their first fish. So it's to see everyone having a good time and spanning those generations, it's really neat to see. My family plays a pretty big role, um, putting up with me in, in the business. We, li we live on site. My daughters love to fish. Two daughters growing up on a farm, that are, uh, I don't know if tomboys is the right uh, notion, but yeah, they like to fish and they're not afraid to get their hands dirty. Peter! Kyle! Hey buddy! Welcome to Rushing Waters! Thank you, it's a real pleasure to be here. 
Oh, great. Glad you're here. So you're going to do a little fishing today? Yeah, and it's a good looking case of uh, some smoked fish and other things, but I know they don't come in here that way. They don't come in here that way, but when they're done, they leave here that way. So tell you what, we'll head on the farm and uh, maybe catch a couple. It's a great place to start. All right, I'll grab yeah. some poles. Cool, cool. So right down here is where the fishing pond is. So how many fish at any one time do you have in these 56 ponds? Usually about 750,000 in the valley. <laughs> All sizes. So, so the likelihood of me catching one is pretty good. It really is. And before <laughs> we do that, let me uh, show you how we actually harvest them for the restaurants. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. We'll just put our poles over here. So here's our farmers. We've got Justin right here. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And Luke. How are you? Hey, Luke. Hi, nice to meet how you. are you, man? So Luke and Justin are going to show us how we actually corral up our fish with the seine and uh, harvest them for our restaurants. Corral them up. Uh, I've helped corral cows, but I got to believe trout a little bit more challenging. They make it look easy though. All right, this I've got to see. So Justin and Luke now are seining the pond, or as I said, corralling them up. And uh, basically one on each side, they're going to now hook it, as we call it, and they'll actually bring this seine back to our side of the pond here. And hopefully they've got a few thousand trout to go through for market. They're, they're caught basically in the net. Right. Luke's going to bring a box in. And these boxes are how we size the fish. As you can see, there's the bars in the bottom. Okay. So there's a length to weight ratio between the bars that when they put the trout in, they gently lift the box up in the pond. The small ones will actually wiggle through back into <laughs> the pond. The big ones stay in the box. That's time to go up to the plant. It's like sifting flour. It's like sifting flour. Sifting trout. <laughs> so this is this is really labor intensive. This is very labor intensive. I mean, there's no other way for you guys to harvest, really. Yeah, there's some fancy pumps you can get, but a lot of these mechanical devices have pros and cons. It's fast, it's quick, but it can be damaging to the animal. I don't want my fish pumped through a machine. And that's that's how we feel. So. So then once they do that, the small ones fall through, then they double check the bigger ones and they'll go into that cage awaiting an order. The way these gentlemen are doing it, I mean, this, is, this has got to have been going on for hundreds of years, right? One of my, one of my jokes is that uh, people ask, well, how did you come up with this scenario? And I told them that we found it on cave drawings. <laughs> it's, this is nothing new about this. Tell me about the quality of the fish, because you guys use this term chemical free. How does that work? Well, one of the philosophies we have is everything is quality based, not quantity. So naturally, uh, we don't use any chemicals. We allow the algae and the weeds to be in the pond, and that's part of Mother Nature's way of cleaning the water. So the weeds you have are not how we think of weeds. These are good weeds, and these are good bugs. They are, exactly. It's part of the natural ecosystem. We want the weeds to be in there to filter the water, and they're place for the bugs to live and it's a good food source naturally for the trout. Wild trout would have them. Exactly. Your farm trout has them. Yeah. Want to give it a shot? Yeah. That's why I came. Hold it in and then flick and let go when you point to where you want to go. Yeah. So, all right. <laughs> oh. Yeah, just hold the button in and shh. Yeah. Some are better than others. There's a chance it's not the operator. Hold on, let's. All right, this one's this one works great. This will be the one to get the big one, I bet. We lost a worm in that process. And then it, then you got to you're releasing the button, right? Now you got it. So there's literally no fish story in these ponds though, because you say, I caught one this big, you're like, we don't let them grow that big. There's a couple in there that'll surprise you. We had a six pounder caught this year. Oh. Oh, I could feel it. Yeah, when that bobber goes down, just give it just a nice little jerk on a pole and that's, uh, that's the, uh, the hook set. All right, let it sit for a second. Nice one. Oh yeah. Woohoo! All right. It's the rush of rushing water, man, catching your first trout. So these are the beauties that you guys 
You guys raised one pound. You ship all over the place to uh, great restaurants, great stores. We pan fry up at home. This is it. This is what makes rushing waters famous. It's a gorgeous fish. It's just a gorgeous fish. Grown in that natural setting, you can see they have the nice fins on them. They keep that nice color, and uh, they're just a very healthy, healthy trout. And this is a Midwestern delicacy. I mean, you can't, you know, you can you can fish Pacific fish and then have it flown in, but this, a day or two, out of one of your ponds, and still arguing. I don't blame you, buddy. <laughs> you are not the one that got away. I hate, except for now. Come on. Reeling them in. <laughs> oh. Got him. <laughs> oh. In the sinkhole. There Here we go. We? All right. That's what I, oh, he's trying to run. He's trying to run. Not today, my friend. Not he's today. Nice, in the net. All right. That is a rushing water rainbow trout, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that beauty. It's gotta be really rewarding to do this job. It is, I mean, it, this is food. This goes back to our to our roots, hunting and gathering, and uh, it is, it's fun. Yeah, and it's, it's part of the state heritage. It is, it's our is, heritage. Yeah. Nice fish. Hey, nice fishing. <laughs> back to the top of the hill. Something new that we have created here at Rushing Waters Fisheries is to really take advantage of the local food movement and the farm to fork we now have an on-site restaurant called the Trout House. And we've linked that together with our fishing pond where you can actually catch your own fish and we'll serve it to you. We call it the hook and cook. A lot of restaurants you go, the local food, everyone shows the purveyors and everything else, you know, come from Madison or grapes from here, tomatoes from here. We have on our thing up there, Rushing Waters Fisheries, 100 yards down the hill. Here's the processing plant, and uh, we'll put our fish right here in this bucket of ice. A little, a literal bucket of fish. So we're gonna dress a fish, or as the fish might be feeling, undress one. Yeah. All right, take one, and you can take one. All right. Start right there. Yeah. Okay. Keep, keep the blade kind of flat. How deep do I go, or keep just, it sort just, of? Just slide it in there. Uh huh. And then all the way up top until you come into the back of the jaw there. Yeah, like right. a little hinge from yeah. the tail on up. That's it. And then come in through the gills. Okay. At the top of the gill plate here. All right. And you should be able to slide it through all the way and it will come out the other side. Oh, so knife facing down, yeah. top of the gill, and That's hey! hey. Right. And then you kind of roll around. Yeah. There you go, you've done it. It's like splitting a chicken. Yeah. 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 And then you're just going to take, pull the guts out. Pull them straight out. Yeah. yeah and then rip out the gills here. Take, get your finger behind the gills and rip those out. Oh. These, these gloves are kind of hard to grab with, yeah, buddy. Yeah, you get used to them, but, you know, they're going to stop. Probably better to have them, yeah. right? Yeah. And then I put my thumb in the back here. This is so profound. Yeah. Because that's the vein that provides the blood for everything, right. for the fish. So then you just push your thumb all the way along and God. push the blood vein up. It's so poetic. That's life force right there. Yeah. How'd I do? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah, a little bit at the bottom there. But, All right. You know, nice. You're pretty good. I Get my thumb good. in there. I sort of felt bad about it, Rob. Yeah, I'm not yeah. going to kid you. So this is a dress trout. Yeah. yeah. There's a rumor that I'll be eating these, and I'm, I'm hoping that it's true. Yes. Yeah. How often do you eat trout? Quite a lot. Yeah. Quite a lot. Quite yeah. often. Yeah. <laughs> do you ever look at a filet and say, you know, I could have cut that better? Probably, sometimes. This one's a little miserly, a little thin. I could have could, could done that better. Speaking of, to the kitchen. Absolutely. Thank you, buddy. You're welcome, Carl. See ya. Here's the kitchen. Here's our chef, Zachary Combs. Hello, Chef Zach. It's nice Hi. to meet you, Kyle. How are you, buddy? Doing well, how are you? Good. This is the uh, Kettle of Fish Kitchen. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So while you're here, what we're gonna do for you, we're gonna make some rainbow trout almondine using our own Russian Waters rainbow trout. Yeah. So what we have, this nice PBO cut head on. Our first step, we're gonna get a pan. You don't want it too hot, you don't want it too cold. Just out the right amount. So not screaming hot, just kind of nope. like medium hot. You, you wanna get a nice medium to medium high heat. 
You notice I'm warming it up without any oil in it. Yep. You don't want to deep fry the fish. Right. If I put the oil in now, it's going to heat up the oil too much. You're going to be deep frying your fish. You want a little crispy skin. So, yep, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So now we've had the pan on for a couple of seconds here. What do you use, grapeseed, something high now, smoke? This is just vegetable oil, canola oil. Okay. It's, uh, it's got a higher flash point than your olive oils, a lot of other oils. So it allows you to get that nice crispy edge without burning. Right. And if you don't have a fancy French pan like this, you can just use any, any old stainless. Any saute pan. Yeah. Like. All right. Cool. Biggest misconception in cooking uh -huh. is that over seasoning is always going to make something taste better. Salt and pepper is all we use to season. I thought the biggest misconception in cooking was that your grandmother was the only one that could make it perfectly. Well, no. Grandmother was always right. So then we're going to go. Put our fish in there, a nice simple is what you want. Meat side down. Yeah, and you always go away from your body. Right, and it doesn't matter if it stares back at you. Well, no, it's good company when you're working in the kitchen. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's the little things that are going to help you. So this is sea salt, but this is, I mean, that's even a bigger chunk of yeah, chunky it's just, variety. Yeah, it's a very, very coarse sea salt. Yeah, it's bigger than the ballet that we use at home. It, it soaks into the fish a lot better, and it allows for us to use less while getting more of it. Wow, look at that artful flip. Look at that gorgeous browning. That is See, that, beautiful. That, that's a lot of that canola oil. Yeah. You know, it gives it a little golden brown without getting too dark. You know, you can see the salt and pepper that just kind of seared itself into it. And you want that popping underneath the skin because yes. it's going to resist the heat a little bit more. Absolutely. So, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but just as with a great steak, the fish should only be flipped once. Absolutely. Anything more than that, you're just you're, messing with yep, it. And that's should. salmon through delicate little skinny Absolutely. trout. Yeah. Absolutely. You can cook trout 101 different ways. Oh, yeah. You yeah. can cook salmon 101 different ways. Yeah. It's all in the eye of the beholder how you want to actually have your fish. Then what we're going to do with our next step, we're going to make our brown butter. Mm -hmm. so what we're going to do, we're going to get a pan, get medium warm heat. Never, never really cook with a searing hot pan. You're just going to wind up burning everything you cook. So what we're going to do, we're getting our pan nice and warm. Is it a seasoned butter you've got it there? It is. We, we, we have a nice compound herb butter. Uh -huh. And what I'm going to do on top of that, as well as browning up, I'm just going to add some more of what we have in the butter. Put a little bit of garlic. Explain, I know what it is, but explain for people what compound herb butter is versus... Compound, compound butter is just, uh, we start with an unsalted butter, and then we spice it up ourselves. What I just added in there was fresh thyme. Mm -hmm. So we take our butter, we whip it up, we add in garlic, we add in fresh thyme, salt, pepper, a little bit of white wine, and then that makes a pound pop. Oh, yeah, oh, that's what we're talking about. Look at how gorgeous that is. So we've got our fish there. We've got a nice herb butter mm -hmm. that's nice and brown. You got a nice brown color in there. You can see when it's Let's starting to bubble it. up there. Yeah. Now we're going to add our almonds in. Little almond slivers, you can get those anywhere. Yep. And what we do, we, we toast them in the pan here. And it's going to absorb a lot of the butter into the nut. At the same time, it's going to be releasing the oil from the almond. Right. So you're just going to get flavor spread out throughout. Which is a good thing. Absolutely. Great American almonds brought to us by the American honeybee. Now we're going to add this right in there. Oh, yeah. Come on. Like that. And take our fish spatula. Slide it back over top. It's like a little present. And now, for the finishing touch, we're just going to go in the oven, which I've got set at 350 degrees. How That's long it. in there, my friend? It's going to take about, depending on the size of the fish, yeah. it's going to take anywhere between, I would say, four to six minutes in the oven after a nice saute like that. Okay. So what we can do in the meantime, then, make a little side dish for you. Zach, let me stop you so I understand. So you've already got this saute trout. It's cooked all the way through. It's in that luscious butter. You've got the almonds, and they broke down because they were in your compound butter. You wrap it all up, why then put it in the oven instead of letting it rest in all those juices? Because it actually was not cooked all the way through. You cook it to about an 80% cook. Okay. Because then it gives it time when it's in the oven, all that butter, all the oil that we talked about in that compound is going to start to soak into the fish. Yeah. So that way when you're taking every forkful, it doesn't matter if you have a forkful of almonds, forkful with the butter, you know, everyone wants to eat a forkful of butter every now and then. You're going to get those great flavors like you've got it anyway, even if you don't have it. I'm going to make a little saute green beans. I have some oil that I got up to a nice heat. I add in some garlic. You're going to be able to watch that garlic kind of roast up as you're doing the green beans. Mm -hmm. we got the green beans that are coming fresh out of Wisconsin. A little bit of salt and pepper on there. And then uh, we can even go one step further on this. This is we got a couple of leftover almonds. Oh, now you're just getting crazy. 
A little green bean almond bean. Toast it off with the green beans. Now I'm gonna need to sneak over back into the oven quick. Mm -hmm. oh, I'll give you a look at that. Whoa, look at that beauty. All that brown butter has yep. done its job. It's browned on the outside now. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Zach, now I get it. And what we have here, a couple of potato pancakes. Come on, it's Wisconsin, of course it's, you do. It's Wisconsin. Yeah. I'm gonna add our green beans on. Almonds on top. Look right at that, beautiful. There. Tell Put me you're not going to waste all that. You're just no. going to, oh, yeah. And there is your rainbow trout almond bean. Gorgeous, gorgeous. You know what? I don't know about you, but a little bit extra is not <laughs> going to hurt. Kitchen. It's your it's kitchen, not chef. not going to hurt. And then top it off, a little fresh squeezed lemon juice. Oh, nice. Bring that brightness in. Yeah, and that's gonna actually tighten up with the um, the skin just yep. a little bit in those yep. proteins. Yeah, wow. There you go. I love it. Do you ever just think, man, I kind of, I kind of want a chicken sandwich after all this fish? I don't really go chicken sandwich. I go Lucky Charms. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Kyle, thank you very much. Happy to be in your kitchen. Happy to have you. <laughs>
the Regional Food and Beverage Industry Cluster, the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. WMSE 91.7 FM, Frontier Radio. The Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board and the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin are proud to support Wisconsin Foodie, helping viewers celebrate our state's vibrant food culture. With nearly 11,000 family dairy farms, the Wisconsin dairy industry generates more than $26 billion annually for the Wisconsin economy and brings recognition to the state for producing award-winning cheeses. I've had Society Insurance for my restaurant from the beginning because I know they understand my business and how it's evolving and how the industry is evolving. You're going to have the coverage and the support you need for your unique operation. The Milwaukee region has the highest concentration of jobs in food, beverage, and ingredients manufacturing in the nation. From production to processing right down to our plates, our regional food industry offers career opportunities to fulfill your dreams and feed the world. A nice picture here of Bill Graham, our owner and founder who bought the farm in 1994. I still talk to him every day and he was in the local food before it was cool. He got it way before anybody. Way before. Saw the vision. Saw it and believed in it and uh, here we are today. Yeah, without Bill there'd be no rushing waters. Exactly. It's pretty great. Yeah. Yeah. Wisconsin guys, we're lucky for him. It's true.